This is a production of Cornell University. Today we're at Bristol's Nursery and we're going to be talking about production method, particularly container production for our landscape jobs. So typically there are three different types of production method, in other words, how you grow the tree. One is bald and burlap, which is B&B, &B, which is a wire basket lined with burlap. The tree grows in that. That's very heavy. Uh, the other one is container growing, which we'll be talking about mostly here. And there's another one, which we'll see in another video, called bare root planting. But today we're going to concentrate on container growing and what that means and how you use it. So you, one of the big advantages of container growing is you're growing a plant in lightweight media that I can pick up very easily. If I would try to do this with a soil medium, it would be probably four times heavier. So lightweight, easy to grow, you get a very uniform product here in a container nursery. Um, and uh, it's easy, you can actually grow it, plant it at any time of the year because you take the root system with the plant in the plastic pot. Uh, and that's a big advantage for the grower and for the uh, contractor who's putting in the job for you. So let's walk over here and see the different container sizes. So typically, we specify containers in different sizes. This is the smallest one we use, it was called a number one. This is number two, number three, and number five. These are the different containers that are typically grown for small shrubs, understory, ground cover type work. When you get into small trees, you can actually get into larger sizes. Here's a number 10, and then a number 15, and a number 20 here. And you can see these are all cornice plants that are grown in different container sizes. And as these grow, they would be up-potted into a larger size container uh, so they continue to grow and not become restricted. So one of the disadvantages of container growing is that if you let the tree grow in the pot for too long, the roots can become circled and restricted. And the other thing about disadvantages of container growing is because we are on a lightweight, soilless media, sometimes water movement between the soilless media and the ground can become restricted, uh, especially when you're doing this in summer. So there are advantages and disadvantages, but most of our plant material is grown in containers, especially shrubs and ground covers. And that's where we'll see most of that, those plants come from. Oh, we were just walking around the nursery and we found these liner pots. These are not typically what we plant, but it could be for a particular job. These are very small three inch square pots with a seedling or a grafted plant in the very young stages before it gets potted up to a larger size. In some cases, we might want to use small material in a job, but that's not typically what we do. Nina just introduced us to the container plant and talked a little bit about advantages and disadvantages and also introduced uh, the container size. So how do we use the container size? How does that relate to uh, specifying and design work? Well, uh, Really, there's a relationship between the size of the container and the size of the plant. Might go without saying, but uh, that relationship is actually standardized in a common document called ANSI Z60.1, the American Nursery Standard. And we'll share that document with you. Uh, what it does is it explains uh, as a, uh, at regular intervals what size root mass for a shrub plant like this uh, relates to what size plant above ground. Here's a plant that's just been up potted actually into the appropriate container size. So we actually have two varieties of plants here and two different size. So when we're specifying what we would like to have installed in a project, we're always going to talk about the size of the plant, not the container. But it's important to understand that there's a relationship there. And you're going to see, see how that plays out here. Uh, when we're specifying, we also uh, always use a range interval to talk about the size we want. Because one plant in one container class that would have one cost actually will be at a, inter a different range of sizes at any given time. So here we have three units that range from 18 to 24 inches in a number five short container. 
So for this case, we would specify, you know, plant X, uh, 18 to 24 inches. And this is what would show up on site. Well, so how does that relate to uh, spacing in the design, knowing that you have this 18 to 24 inch high plant? So I'm gonna show you an example of like how these nine plants would lay out and what kind of spacing they would take up. For this number five container uh, with these 18 inch plants, it'd be typical to space them about two times the size of the plant. So here we have roughly three foot spacing on center staggered. We like to stagger and not lay out the plants in a straight line like that. And we'll get more into that at another time. So here we have the three foot spacing. And then up here uh, in this number two class container with these plants between 12 to maybe 15 inches, we're gonna space them about uh, 24 to 30 inches apart. So here we have that. Give me one second to space them out. All right, so what I'm going for here is a spacing that will allow these plants uh, in a relatively short amount of time actually to grow together and colonize what we call a closed canopy. And it's important then that we make sure when we're specifying the plant size that we're thinking about plant spacing and that relationship over time of how they're gonna to grow to colonize and occupy a space. Uh, the result of them coming together and growing into one monolithic mass is that with a closed canopy, they'll actually be uh, more self-sustaining. They'll shade the root system, which helps with water retention, and they'll outcompete by shading the area of growth uh, in the open landscape, they'll actually reduce weed recruitment. So they'll prevent weedy species from invading. If we space them too far apart and they're not able to fill in that space in again a relatively short period of time, say one or two years of establishment, with this open space available, we're gonna see other plants coming in. In most typical installations, that's really not what we're looking for, is that random effect. So that's more like a typical spacing. These nine plants, we're looking at something like, uh, let's take a quick measure, probably about eight feet by about six feet area. So that's, that's about how they would lay out. So now we've spoken a little bit about, uh, you know, the container plant and production techniques and methods, up potting, uh, and then we talked a little bit about design standards, uh, spacing, specifying size, and layout. And now finally, we're gonna talk about the kind of the last stage of the journey of the plant from the production facility, uh, maybe through a distributor's yard, but ultimately to a construction site where it's going to be installed. So now your plant has been loaded on a truck at the production facility or contractor's yard and is coming to site. At that point, you're going to want to be there to inspect it. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so sure, when we wrote the specification for this plant, we required it to be of this certain size range and in this certain pot size. And on the truck, it's better to inspect this on the truck because no one wants to reload, if anything is rejected, to reload it on the truck and take it away. So on the truck, we'd actually inspect the plant for the size and pot size that we required, also the health and uh, contain it, condition of the plant, so it's not diseased or dead parts or anything that would be rejected. So once we said that it's yes, it's our size, it's our pot, it looks good, then we want to uh, store the plant in an area on the job site so that it's gonna be protected before planting occurs. And this is a very difficult, often a very difficult time for the plant because uh, it had to be in a shady spot, mulched and watered. Critically, it's important to water them, realizing that in the nursery, these pots were watered every day because of the lightweight medium. Mm -hmm. That's right. So at the end of that stage where the plant is on site and being stored, and it's finally time to plant, you're gonna to wanna to be there for that, to achieve the layout that you specified, uh, the correct spacing again, but also now's the final opportunity to do one last look at the plant after that storage period and at this time, the plants are all gonna be unpotted and you're gonna to get to see the root system. This uh, hydrangea here actually has a really lovely, nice fibrous root network, not too dense, lots of uh, clean white growth. 
can actually, nice fresh soil smell to it, uh, no dead material, but also it's not overly rooted. It's not what we call pot bound. Uh, there can be a condition where if the plant has been in the pot too long, actually the roots will start to grow and encircle around the perimeter of the pot, which forms a barrier. So actually this is a really nice looking root system. If it were pot bound or if there were encircling roots, this would be another opportunity for you to reject the plant. But no, this is a good plant and it's time for it to go in the ground. At that point, once it's in the ground, you own it. This has been a production of Cornell University, on the web at cornell.edu.